acceptance of that violence, and we are first asked to condemn violence, I find that there is a sense of hypocrisy in those questions when our suffering is not being recognized. And the first thing we're asked is to condemn. What do you think Israel was going to do when Hamas cuts a hole in the fence and comes over the top and kills 1,300 people? What did you think they should have done? I think they have every right to go in combat with Hamas, but I don't think they have the right for 92% of the death count to be civilians. If they burn an infant in a crib, do you see that as a moral equivalent to a collateral death from a bomb being dropped as an act of war? They have explicitly targeted civilian areas that have been marked as civilian areas. Israel has the registry for every person in Gaza. And if that's where the enemy is hiding, do they have a right to attack them? No, they do not have the right to kill. There are some things that are just fundamental human decency. And when I ask you if what happened on October 7th is something you condemn and you say, well, you have to look at that by looking at hundreds of years of conflict. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's either right or it's wrong, and it was wrong, and I don't need a hundred years of conflict to know it was wrong. The fact of the matter is that Hamas, yes, did take innocent life. Why did Hamas take away innocent life? Why was Hamas platformed? Why was Hamas funded? Why is Hamas empowered to take away innocent life? Let me tell you something. When somebody comes over a fence Mm -hmm. and goes into someone's house Mm -hmm. and burns their infant Mm -hmm. in its crib, I don't give a damn why they did it. It's wrong. I've read it that the charter of Hamas is to eliminate the Jewish race, beginning with Israel, but not stopping with Israel, wiping them off the face of the earth. Is that true? This is true, but it does not end there. Now we have the problem of the pro-Palestine who are actually given Hamas cover. They are participants in the crime. In fact, since October 7, I personally don't differentiate between Hamas and what so-called Palestinians. Because actually there is no Palestinians. There are uh, tribes. There is a tribe of Hamas, and there is a tribe of the Islamic Jihad, and there is a tribe of Khalil, and there is a tribe of Nablus, and each one has different uh, interests, and all of them are conflicted. If they did not have Israel as the common enemy, they would kill each other. This is the reality you of what's so called Palestine. You don't know what Palestine is. Actually, in fact, the kefiyah that you are wearing, mm-hmm. this is just a statement to show that you really lack the authenticity to represent the case. And what's so-called the cause, mm-hmm. you know, this is a human problem. So you just... The cause must die. I think enough is enough. And now it's proven, and you are helping Hamas to prove it to the world, that Palestine depends on the destruction of the state of Israel. And this is not acceptable, and we are not going to agree to it. And I tell you something, for the next 10 or 20 years, the Palestinian people will pay the bill that Hamas is caused today, and most likely in blood. To you, Hamas and Palestinians are are the same, they're one and the same. After October 7, yes, there is no difference. Really? The vast majority of the Palestinian people support Hamas. Really? This is a fact. This is proven by statistics and your silence now. You are not even, you cannot even condemn Hamas and say that what they did on October 7 was an act of a savage group. You don't have that power. Said I condemn on what authority question. do you speak? You only speak on the authority of Hamas propaganda. No, I'm, why do you say that I'm speaking on the authority of Hamas propaganda? Because if I'm you were a decent human being, you can say that the thousands were killed on October 7. That was a crime against humanity. It was a genocide. It, uh-